Okay everyone, today's video is about how to print a photo. So you actually have a physical printer in your home, office, etc. And uh, you want to print out a photo. And this is opposed to having someone else print out for you, like Walgreens, Walmart, Costco, whatever. So there's a series of steps you need to do to ensure proper print quality. Uh, at times when you're first starting out, it can be trial and error. Uh, this point, the point of the video is to maybe save you some of that trial and error that at least I went through. All right, what I'm doing is pr I always print all my photos through Lightroom, even those ones that have been processed through Photoshop. They're back in Lightroom, and I use the Lightroom, I'm using 3.5 uh, mechanism to print here. So I've picked uh, a photo that I want to print out and put in my model portfolio book and what I'm doing now is I'm in the development module I'm doing one more scan is there anything else I want to pick or fix rather in the photo are the colors vibrant enough is it sharp enough all those things so I think it looks okay I'm going to go over to the print module and here you want to make sure that this is where things can go wrong. You want to make sure you, you're on um, the right printer, uh, the print looks correct, you have the right image size. So first thing I, I noticed that it has selected a different printer than what I want it to go to. I need it to go to my Epson Stylus Photo R3000. I have it connected to the network. Okay, so this is the first step. Confirm your printer, R3000. Uh, confirm your paper size. Let's come back to this. So, actually, let's go ahead and fix it. I, I'm going to print off in a 11 by 17. And US space B is 11 by 17. I'm using this sheet feed. I'm going to do it in portrait mode. And let's go into the properties. Now I'm make sure all of your, your drivers for your printer are up to date, uh, you know, accurate, all those things. So I'm going to confirm what I want to do here. This is the key thing with the printing here. Confirm that you're using the correct black ink. I'm using photo black. I'm not doing any black and whites. So my printer can support the two. Photo black and matte black, so let's do photo black. Now, let's talk about the paper. It's very important that you link your photo print driver software here to the actual photo paper that you're planning to use. So, I have a series of uh, different brands and sizes of photo paper and I need to pick the one that I want to use. So here you can see that I'm using the Epson 11 by 17 size. So I got the size down, right? And now you want to make sure that you have the, exactly the same model or, or version of the paper. So you have to read what it says here, premium photo, photo paper glossy. So premium photo paper glossy. That's key. It may not sound like very important words, but it is. It, there's a specific uh, definition for what that means. Here you can see that there's different brands of paper in different sizes. I have 11 by 14. Uh, I have a 4 by 6 from Costco that is ultra cheap and actually is not too bad in quality. And uh, Epson for all my other sizes. Uh, depending on the size of the paper, it can be... Uh, expensive and if you get up to the matte finishes it can be even more expensive so you want to make sure you have your settings and everything correct before you invest in uh, printing your papers here printing on your paper all right so let's back to the driver here so remember I said premium photo paper glossy so the media type premium photo paper glossy so it's already set that way, but you can tell that there's different styles. Photo paper glossy, premium photo paper semi-gloss, ultra premium photo paper luster. So and there's the matte ones. So again, I'm already on the premium photo paper glossy. I'm going to print color. Then you want to think about how good do you want the, to make the photo. 
if you're doing just doing family pictures, four by sixes, um, what uh, I often do is use the speed, so that means it prints it fast, but it's not the highest quality. Uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put quality. This is a level four quality, uh, good enough for my needs. And there's a mode of the color profile here. This is key, and this can. This is where I spend a lot of time uh, trying different things to get that perfect rendition of the of the color of what you see on the screen. The key thing is you want to make sure what you see on the screen matches your printout. So you know you can use your Epson sRGB. You can use the o, Adobe RGB. What I found is you want to make sure that the printer manages the the color profile and it's set to the color profile that would match the premium photo paper glossy. So what does that mean? Off. No color management. Again, it's a single sheet feed. I'm going to use 11 by 17. I'm going to double check that my inks are okay. I'm running short on a couple, but I should be good for this, uh, this uh, print. And most of these are the settings I don't need to change. Um, I'll say overall the Epson software driver is very easy to use. All right, we're back in the print setup, reconfirm the sizes, etc. So now you can see it readjusted to what you see on the, the screen here. Um, now over into the Lightroom functionality, simple image contact, sorry, single image contact sheet. That's correct. I only want to print one image. So you can see I have a little bit of a uh, white border around here. I don't I want that maybe I cropped it a little bit in the original photo possibly so you can go zoom to fill so it puts only a small and even border around the photo which actually looks really nice um, margins you know you can play with these typically I just leave them at their defaults or the the smallest possible margin I want more photo and less white of course cell size this is where you can add other photos um, again, this is what I want. So inches 16 by 76 and 10 by 76. It can reconfirms the paper size. Watermarking, I don't need that. Photo info, I, I can print some stuff on here if I wanted to, but I don't need to. Print to, this is the area where you need to double check again. Print to printer, yes. Rather than the JPEG file. Draft mode, no. Print resolution, 240. Print sharpening. I'll leave it at low and let the printer driver manage uh, some of that as well. And um, again, media type glossy. So you need to be careful here that there's multiple spots you're being asked the same question. So you just, the key thing here is make everything in sync before you commit to your big printout. What I found is it's best to often print in a 4x6 first, check the settings, and then readjust the, for the size. So I'm going to select color management, the specific type of paper that I'm using again, rendering intent I'm going to leave alone, double check everything, hit the print button. I pulled up the print dialog and I have, uh, going, I'm going to double check this once more, this is the correct printer, it's the correct quality, it's the correct paper size paper type, etc. So we're okay there. Now, before I hit okay, I'm going to pull out uh, my printer paper and load the printer paper, which I should have done before I did the video here. But uh, this is what we're going to do now.
Okay, so I've adjusted for the paper side. Is the printer on? Yes. Let's close or open rather the uh, the uh, tray for to receive the uh, photo paper when it's printed. And let's now go back to the Windows desktop that I'm using and actually print the photo. Hit OK. Preparing print job, rendering page one. Depending on how much detail, how much color you have here, um, it will uh, signify how long this thing will take. Kind of want to double check the printer, make sure it's uh, all going okay. Appears to be. This kind of activity with printing is. You know, it takes a lot of practice, again, like I said. It can lead to really beautiful results, but it can also lead to a lot of frustration and uh, wasted ink and paper. It's, it's great having the ability to do this, you know, at home, in your office studio, rather than waiting, going to Costco or wherever else. So I'm going to select color management, the specific type of paper that I'm using again, rendering intent I'm going to leave alone, double check everything, hit the print button. Okay, it's rendering the page, preparing to print. Print dialog comes up, has my specific file, type of media, type of paper. It may give me an ink low warning. You can see it print out, it's kind of one fourth of the way through. Paper loaded back here, sorry, it's a little dark. Got the paper tray extended, and uh, we're on our way here. Okay, focus that in for you. Got the old iPhone 4 doing this, this view of the video here. And uh, I got a multi-cam recording session going on here. Let's see how this uh, turns out. So you can see it's starting to <laughs> peek out here. Very blue, very blue so far. So again, this is 11 by 17 uh, premium photo paper glossy. This is the package that uh, comes in. Then by 17 to 20 in the package, really, you're not going to be printing every day, most people. Um, but it, it is really fun to learn this stuff and, and figure it out. I already like those blues in the background there. You have to apologize, I have to apologize that these videos, when I, you know, I'm doing this video and I have different quality settings on my video and the image capture on the screen, you know, it's, uh, the videos don't do the pictures justice at all, especially my desktop capture. This is what it looks like on the screen over here. Almost done with the print. Remaining one minute, it says. Uh, we'll see. But uh, you can already tell. I mean, visually for me, a lot of nice blues. Skin color could be a little blue oriented. Yeah, might be a hair off on the skin color. But what I've learned is that uh, you have to make sure these things dry. So I'm gonna print this off and let it sit for about 24 hours. And then it'll, then you should judge 
the color quality, accuracy. So, on our way here. Okay, we're all printed. It uh, didn't take too long. Again, I did this on the quality setting. I mean, it could be, it could have been higher quality. Yeah, I think the skin is pretty good. I know I'm flipping the camera all different uh, angles here for you. But I think that is pretty good. I like the blues. So that's how you do it, folks. So here's the 11 by 17 printout. 24 hours later, uh, you have to let it set for at least that long to let the colors set and then do your evaluation of uh, kind of how it looks uh, in final form here. I think it looks good. The, the skin color um, uh, became more warm from what I can uh, judge. And uh, that's kind of what I wanted there, and it uh, it looks really good.